Hello friends, my name is Rich Bowen and I am the community manager for the CentOS project. Once again, I'm getting to this a little bit late in the month, but I wanted to update you on some of the things that are happening in the CentOS community. Last week we published the August edition of the community newsletter and that has many of these things in a little more detail, so I encourage you to read that. The link is in the description below. But there's a few things that I wanted to highlight in this video. The first of these, and you'll be hearing this consistently over the next few months, I want to make sure that everyone is aware that CentOS Linux 8 is scheduled for end of life in December. This was announced last year in December, and I know that some of you have still missed this news, so you want to read that announcement and make sure you're aware of what your options are at this point. As a project, we encourage that you at least try out CentOS Stream, which is a replacement for many of the things that people were using CentOS Linux for. But there are many other alternatives out there at this time. In the July Board of Directors meeting, the board approved the creation of an automotive SIG. As you may be aware, Linux is part of the operating system of a number of automobiles already at this point, and with Red Hat getting into the automotive industry, doing that development upstream in CentOS makes a lot of sense for both Red Hat itself and many of our partners who will be working on this offering. By doing this in the public, we allow corporations to get involved in the development of automotive Linux. It also gives hobbyists a chance to see what's coming and Maybe even at some point you can run this on your own vehicle. We'll have to see. The uh, automotive SIG is currently getting spun up. There's a meeting scheduled for this week where they're going to be setting some of the governance around how that SIG will work. And if you're interested, I encourage you to attend their SIG meetings, which will be every other week going forward. We have some exciting changes in the CentOS Board of Directors. The change that affects you most directly is that as of the August Board of Directors meeting, these meetings are now completely public. If you're interested in attending a Board of Directors meeting, you can watch on the CentOS Devel mailing list for the invitations and sign up to get the information of how to join. We're not just making it publicly listed because that tends to lead to uh, people crashing the meeting and doing spammy things. But if you want to attend, we'll make that possible for you. In the August meeting, we also seated two new directors, Josh Boyer and Davida Kavalka, and they replace outgoing board members Carl Treloff and Karsten Wade. So we welcome them to the board and look forward to serving with them for the next year or years, as the case may be. We're excited to report that we will be at some in-person events in the coming months. CentOS expects to have a presence at the Open Source Summit in Seattle in late September, and also at All Things Open in October in Raleigh, North Carolina. In addition to that, the call for presentations for the CentOS Dojo in October is still open. If you're doing something interesting on CentOS, we want to hear about it. Submit your presentation at the URL listed there, and we are really excited to see another edition of our, of our online dojo, because there's always a great community presence around that, as well as deep technical content. As usual, the newsletter contains reports from various of our special interest groups. As you no doubt know, special interest groups are a place where the community can provide content, packages, and additional work on top of the base CentOS platform. So if you're interested in working on any of these, I encourage you to read their reports and attend their weekly or monthly meetings. There's also a number of news articles listed in the newsletter that highlight some of the things that are happening around the CentOS community from an external perspective. If you are aware of news articles highlighting what's happening in CentOS, 
I would ask that you bring them to my attention so that I can list them in upcoming newsletters. Finally, I want to note that if you're interested in participating in producing this newsletter or in any other aspect of the CentOS community, just ask. You can contact me directly or you can ask on any one of our mailing lists how you can get involved or offer your services to help out. Until next time, thank you for being part of the CentOS community and I look forward to maybe seeing you at one of these upcoming events.